amazing
Well, good morning, everyone. Hey, it is so good to be with you this morning. Thanks for coming out this morning. Will you stand with us as we begin with this old hymn? church and welcome to church. Um, we are so delighted that of all the places you could be this morning, you are here to praise our creator together. 
Um, my name is Katie Phillips Rector. I am the Assistant Director of Children's Ministry here at LCPC. Um, and since you're already standing, let's call one another to worship using the words on the screen. How can we keep still this day? There is joy in this place. God's steadfast love extends to everyone. God reaches out to us all in forgiveness and compassion. Thanks to God for all the wonderful blessings we have received. Let us celebrate God's joyful love for and with us. Amen. is my firm foundation the rock on which I stand when 
everything around me is shaking. No, I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. Because he's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So I would he fail now? He won't. No, he won't. Because I've still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense So I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength Cause I've built my life on Jesus And He's never let me down He's faithful in every season Amen so why would he fail now? He won't. No, he won't. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't. Come on up here, have a seat on the floor. Come on up. Uh, as they're coming, just a few quick reminders. So first, uh, first through third graders are invited to merge during Lent. So we have a few more weeks of that. We'd love to invite them for all the Wednesdays that are left in March to come anytime three to nine on Wednesdays, okay? And also, we are going to have an egg hunt on Easter, and so we are collecting 
donations of candy. Oh, there's a box outside the children's building. You can bring it on Sundays or uh, to the office during the week. All right. Well, good morning, kiddos. Oh, my goodness. The same thing happened last service. Good morning. Oh, that's better. That's better. Thank you. Uh, This month, during the trail, we are learning all about peace, okay? So our God is a God of peace. Then we have Jesus who comes as the ultimate peacemaker, and we have the Holy Spirit who gives us the power to also be peacemakers. So today we're going to talk about peacemaking, and um, this isn't exactly what the adults are learning about, but it goes grown-ups with, you know, being part of the kingdom of God. So uh, first, I want you to think of what contributes to a lack of peace. Peace. When is there not peace? Can you think of an example? Yeah, war, right? War is like the opposite of peace. When countries or people are fighting with each other, there's conflict. What else? Do you think, are there times in your life where you feel a lack of peace? What do you think? Dakota, I didn't know you were here today. That's fun. Yeah, all the way from Las Vegas. Yeah, when your friends are fighting, for sure. I know I sometimes feel a lack of peace. You know, maybe if you have more than one child in your family <laughs> or, or siblings, that's sometimes a lack of peace, right? Oh, who, me? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to do a little bit of science this morning, and we're going to think about these as being people, or if you're thinking about war, even countries or nations, we're going to talk about them as people who have a lack of peace, right? So they're in conflict. And then we're going to talk about what it looks like for a peacemaker to intervene, but I need somebody to volunteer to shape this into a heart. Who would like, you want to do that, Tyler? Okay, so he's going to shape that dough into a heart while I get our circuit ready, okay? So we've got some battery power here. We can think about this being the power of the Holy Spirit who helps us, right, as we create peace. And then remember, these, sh- these are the conflicting parts, right? That lack of peace. So they're butting heads right there. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Okay, and then I'm going to show you what happens. So we have some power here, and then I'm going to put this little light bulb in, and we're going to see what happens when they are in conflict, okay? So it lights up for a little bit, and then it gets much more dim, right? So we have some dim connection here, okay? So that's a lack of peace. And then we're going to find out what happens when we put a peacemaker in between them, okay? So this is somebody who's coming to help make peace. So if we think about a conflict with your friends, right, who might step in to be a peacemaker? Who might, an adult, right? Maybe it's a teacher, maybe at home it's a parent. A person, yes. So they come and they can help in the conflict. I will. They can help in the conflict to make peace. Okay, so... If this works correctly, we're going to see a difference in our light. You don't think it's going to work? It would help if I put it the right direction. Your hands are shaking so bad. You're right. It's not touching. Look. Oh, no. It's all about circuits. Short circuits. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, (laughs) I was not expecting a round of applause. Okay. (laughs) So... So we're going to talk more in the trail but about how we, with the power of God's Holy Spirit, can make peace among each other, right? How we can follow Jesus' example and be peacemakers, okay? So if you are in sixth grade or under, you guys are dismissed to go to the trail, and seventh through twelfth graders are dismissed to Horizon. Oh my goodness. And I'd love to invite everyone else to greet one another this morning. Cool, huh?
are the only King forever. Um, and if there's people in the overflow that because the kids left, there are some, some seats. So if you want to come in and people can make room for you, but welcome. We are so glad that you are all worshiping with us and we welcome those of you who are worshiping online as well. If you are a visitor, we want to extend a special welcome to you. We'd love to know that you're here. And so we have these welcome cards that you can fill out and put them in the offering plate so that we can learn who you are and reach out to you. We also have a special gift for you at the welcome table, so I encourage you to stop by in the lobby afterwards. And then there is a text number up on the screen that anybody can use if you have a question about the church, if you're online and want to let us know that you're out there, or if there's a prayer request, I encourage you to use that text number. We have a confidential prayer team that can be praying for that. And then we'd love to know who all is here. And so we have these red friendship pads that are near the center aisles. If you can take those, fill them out, pass them down. When they come back, you can be reminded of who's seated next to you. Give them a big greeting. Invite them to have a donut hole after worship. Uh, but welcome. So last night we had a wonderful celebration of our parent education's 45th uh, anniversary of their meeting. We had a, a great time. It was their annual gala. That's their fundraiser. And I'm surprised the Fabers aren't still dancing from last night. It was just an amazing time. We had a great, great, great time together. And as part of the ways that they raise funds for their ministry is to also have an online auction. Well, that online auction continues today until 11.59 tonight. And there are 118 items for everybody on there. So we encourage you to continue to support Parent Ed by going online and getting something from the auction and uh, it should be a wonderful time for us to continue to support this great, great, great ministry. So, online. All right, women, I'm talking to you right now. You are invited to come to our annual women's retreat. It's April 12 to 14. I'm really excited that we're back at a retreat center. Um, this is going to be the Sarah Retreat Center in beautiful Malibu. And it is an amazing time to to meet others, uh, to get to know people more, to uh, strengthen your connection with God. We're excited to hear from Lisa Leo, who's going to talk about attuning to Jesus. So I encourage you to sign up. Uh, you can get more information and sign up on the website. So this year, as we continue in Lent, our annual uh, Lenten concert that Jack Lance and the choir and the orchestra has put together is going to be on Palm Sunday. That's March 24th at 2 o'clock in the sanctuary. It'll also be online as well for those of you who might not be able to make it in person. But it's a great way to bring a friend and introduce them to life and ministry at our church. They are looking at the music of Mozart. Apparently Mozart, um, you think 45 years ago was something for parent ed. 245 years ago, Mozart wrote a mass specifically for Easter, and they're going to be sharing that wonderful music uh, at that Lenten celebration. So please come, uh, bring a friend. It's going to be a wonderful Lenten concert on the music of Mozart. Also, if you haven't noticed, when I mean, you come in today, there is a new March calendar. So we pray all of you will take one of these, put it on your refrigerator at home or something like that. It has all the things coming up for this next month and plus a lot of other information about a lot of other wonderful ministries happening. So please get one of these calendars before you leave. Well, today is an exciting day because it is a day where we welcome new members uh, joining the church. So I encourage all of you new members uh, to start coming up in front of us here. I will be reading off the names, but don't, don't wait for your name. We have Damian and Danielle Contas, Amy Wang, Ray Kwan and Lorraine Kelly Kwan, Tom Kramer, Manya Lewis, David and Laura McKinley, Anne Marie and Mitchell Thomas. So we are so ex excited to have you here. We believe that when new people join the church, our church gets stronger. So I have some questions of faith for you. So you, go, you can go ahead and 
block check, it's fine. <laughs> I have some questions of faith for you. Do you trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord? If so, say, I do. Do you promise to be his disciple, obey his word, and show forth his love? If so, say, I do. Do you promise to be a faithful member of the church wherever you may be? If so, say, I do. All right. So friends, please join with me as we pray again for these new members. So Lord God, again, we do come to you this morning offering our great thanksgiving and acknowledging our great joy for these sisters and brothers in Christ who are publicly affirming their love for you and their trust in you, as well as their desire to belong and serve and grow with the Christian community here at the La Cunada Presbyterian Church. But Lord, even more important than that, we thank you for calling them first to you and then bringing them into a new relationship with you and with your family in your kingdom. And so now, Lord, we do ask that by your Spirit and through your Word and with the body of Christ that is our church, you will, as the Apostle Paul says in Colossians, fill these saints with the knowledge of your will so that they may lead lives worthy of the Lord, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in their knowledge of God, strengthened by your power. And so, Lord, may they now be further equipped and encouraged here to be Christ's people in the world, women and men, partnering together to experience the kingdom of God and express your gospel wherever they are, being and making disciples of Christ. For we ask this all in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord, and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Chuck. Thanks, Pastor Cindy. I'd like to introduce you to Deacon Michelle Powers, who's the deacon for our new members. And uh, everybody who's a member here or visitors have deacons. I hope you get to know them. But thank you for taking this responsibility and for introducing. And just a couple words uh, from me. I shared at the first service with you, but I'm going to share to everyone here. It's an honor to be here today with you for this opportunity for you to join the church officially. Anybody who comes to church and participates in the life of the church is part of the family. But because you've officially joined, what that means is you get to vote on certain things. You help us guide and direct the church into the future under the Spirit's guidance. And so we're grateful for that. And someday, uh, some of you might be elders or deacons of the church. You have to be a member to do that. So thank you for taking this official step in doing that. I just want to say what an honor and privilege it is to join together with you in ministry, for all of us to join together in ministry, to love and serve the Lord Jesus in this community, in the communities, and around the world. So thank you for that. As I mentioned the first service, I'll do it in this one as well. I know you can't see people online right now, but you can visualize who they are. And then uh, for everybody here, as you look around, this is your family. They love you. They're here to pray for you, to love you, to support you. Uh, and you are here to pray and love and support them as well. It's wonderful to be a part of the family. In fact, we believe with the Spirit connecting us as the family of God. There's something called koinonia, which in, in the Greek means fellowship. It's actually untranslatable. It's just a, a special relationship we share that's so deep because of the Spirit who lives within us. So welcome to this ministry. I want to thank you for being a part of it. And can we just say congratulations to them joining the church today? And so we look forward to the way that God will use you in our midst, and we'll be joining together in ministry, and uh, welcome again. Uh, as we come to the offering this morning, I just want to say thank you for making this possible, because again, our goal and our hope is to reach the world with the love of Jesus Christ and the good news, that coming together as the people of God to worship, but we also believe that God is working in our midst right now. There are people awakening to God for the first time in this community and beyond, and so we want to be there as new disciples, uh, not only to bring in disciples, but to bring new disciples as well, and to see what God is doing. And we're excited. I feel that rumbling in my spirit that the, the, the God is doing something. We're standing on the threshold. So thank you for helping us get to this point of new members, and we look forward to the next new member class and whatever else we're doing. But when, when we come to the offering, it's an opportunity for us not only to give back to God a part of what we receive from God as a way of saying, God, thank you. We bring worth to your name. That's what worship means. It's also an opportunity where we give to be able to do the ministry. And so 
uh, I encourage you to give generously in this offering time so we can have more experiences of new members, new disciples, and see where God is working. So as we come together, there are a couple ways you can do that. If you're joining with us online, you can text a gift in, you can go to the website, make a donation, or you could send a donation to the church. And for those of you who, that are here this morning, the ushers will come forward in just a moment to receive this morning's offering. Let us worship God with our giving. Thank you. Oh, oh, by the way, oh, I'm sorry. Make sure to say hello to them after the service today, <laughs> right? And, and if they're gone, because they were here in the first service, they may be gone, you'll see them next week or the week after. Make sure to extend your hand and welcome them here as part of our welcome to this church. So let us give to God. Oh, 
Friends, please join me in this time of prayer. Let us pray together. Our highest and holy God, Lord and Lamb and King of Kings, we do thank you for another day of life and of life with and in your Spirit. And as we continue on our Lenten journey, Lord, may we again this year find new and deeper and wider ways of sensing a fuller and closer meaning of your kingdom coming into our world and into each of our lives. And Lord, as your Spirit leads us into a greater sense of your presence and your perfection, we are then also led into an awareness and acknowledgement that we are far from perfect in every area of our lives. And so we need your mercy, and we need your forgiveness. So, Lord, in this moment of silence, hear us as we each come to you directly and honestly, admitting our failures and fears and ways we have forgotten you. Lord, hear our confessions of our sins. Thank you, Lord, for you hearing these descriptions of our sins and then wanting us to hear your pardon of them. Also, we can better move forward toward becoming kingdom of God people who practice better kingdom of God relationships. And Lord, the need for those relationships extends far beyond our own immediate circle of connections all the way to the interrelatedness of tribes and countries. And so we are called again to continue to pray and work for peace in the Middle East, most critically and collectively with the men, women, and children in Palestine. And then we also pray yet another week for the Ukrainians as they battle against a far greater army with far greater resources and reserves. In those and other war-torn places, Lord, may there be further movements toward peace and helpful resolutions and ceasefires and support, especially to all those innocent civilians who have been starving or even killed while waiting for humanitarian aid. Nevertheless, Lord, at the same time, we are grateful to hear in other parts of the world how the message of Christ continues to resonate with folks in such a way that literally thousands of people are becoming faithful followers and disciples of Jesus. So therefore, we thank you for our partner that we pray for this week in Brazil, the South American Theological Seminary. May they be encouraged to discover and develop and deploy disciples who in turn can repeat that same process so that more and more people and generations can take the message of Christ 
to the ends of the earth. And then here today, Lord, we do thank you again for the people who have chosen to join this part of your kingdom, this body of Christ at LCPC. And as we have prayed for them, we also take time now in silence to bring to you names of others we know who need the guidance and healing touch of your spirit directly and maybe even through us. So hear our prayers, Lord, as we intercede for those who are ill or lost or running from you that we know and love. Please hear our prayers. now, God, strengthen our kingdom relationship with you as we all pray together the prayer you taught us to pray, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Sing that chorus one more time. In the angels cry. In the angels cry. Holy, O creation cry. Holy, you are lifted high, holy, holy forever. Hear people sing, holy to the King of Kings. The uh, scripture for today comes from Mark's gospel, the second chapter. We're going to look at just a couple verses, 18 18 through 20. In our series on the kingdom of God, we've already looked the first week as the good road from above. Whenever we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's It's the understanding of the realization that there is another road, and we need to get on that road where God is and and um, see how things from above can be here on earth. But we also looked last week then at the kingdom of God as Jesus, the Messiah, coming to set things right, that he came to cast out the darkness, to calm the wind and the waves, to make this world, or at least give us a foreshadowing of what God desires for the kingdom that this is where God reigns and where God's presence is. This morning we look at relationships, and specifically about the relationships uh, that God talks about, God's relationship to God's people. Relationships can be kind of messy, but let's take a look at this. Jesus was talking to the religious leaders. Uh, People came to him and asked him this question. Listen to the word of the Lord, Mark chapter 2. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting, and people came and said to him, Why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus said to them, the wedding guests cannot fast while the bridegroom is with them, can they? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from from them, and then they will fast on that day. And so we see in the Scripture, Jesus uses this image 
of the groom to the bride, the groom and the bride. The idea of, as we see in the Old Testament, God with his bride, Israel. Now Jesus is talking about being the groom to the bride who is us. We are the bride of Christ. Such a beautiful image. And then we'll look at fasting also and what that has to do with it as well. Relationships are messy. It takes a lot of courage to have a relationship, doesn't it? Because things don't always go the way you expect them to go. And sometimes when you start committing to something, whether it's a brother to brother, sister to sister, brother to sister, husband to wife, lovers to it, those relationships can get really, really messy. You know, Kathy and I, when we were first married, we, we went into marriage with our eyes open, or so we thought. But then all of a sudden, we went on the honeymoon. We went to Oahu, Hawaii. It was just such a great place for us to go. And the first day we woke up, uh, Kathy was, oh, she was stunning, white outfit with, with white shorts and a white shirt. And we went to the backside of the island and, and on a tour bus, and we had breakfast there. And while we were sitting at breakfast, uh, all of a sudden I turned to Kathy and said, Kathy, would you like some coffee? She said, yeah. I'd love some coffee. So I picked up the coffee pot, and I went to go pour her coffee, and in through the door walked Don Ho. Does anybody know Don Ho? <laughs> Tiny bubbles. Do you remember that? I said, Kathy, it's Don Ho, and I poured it all over the front of her outfit. <laughs> now, again, we were on a tour bus on the other side of the island, so you can imagine the whole day in this beautiful, stunning white outfit now stained with coffee, but to make matters worse, scalding and burned. We got back to the hotel later in the afternoon. We had time, so I said, let's go up Diamond Head. And so we took the walk up Diamond Head, but she didn't have the right shoes on. And so by the time we got to the hotel, it was a beautiful view. We got back to the hotel. She had blisters all over her feet, and she was limping. There she is scalded and now limping. And <laughs> She went to bed, or at least so I thought. I, I decided to unpack some of the clothing in the closets and noticed that our clothes were, um, they were wrinkled. I'd like to iron. I think it's the only place in my life where I can see something working out, right? So I'm ironing that day as Kathy's in bed, but the ironing board didn't have a stand. It was just the board. So I put it on the ground, began to iron, not knowing that Kathy got up. And I looked up, stunned, and ironed the top of her foot. So she's scalded in her chest and abdomen. She's got blisters, and now she's ironed and blistered it on her feet. Okay, day number two. <laughs> we, we went body surfing to the other side of the island. It was great. In the water, it was so refreshing. The water was beautiful. I got out after some hours in there, dried myself off, and I saw Kathy come in screaming. For some reason, the jellyfish liked her, and she was stung all over. I thought, are you kidding me? We were all in the same water together, and they go to, well, anyway, nonetheless, now she's burned there. This wasn't looking too good. <laughs> I'm starting to think, what have we gotten into? Or, or I guess I was thinking, what have I gotten into, right? The next day, we figured, okay, we'll go out and we'll go swimming again. But this time, Kathy stayed in the beach and uh, went out farther than I should. Somebody told me out there, there are some tropical fish. You ought to go out there and bring some frozen peas. I don't know if you're allowed to do that or not. But I got a bag of frozen peas, put them in my pocket, and swam out farther than I should past the coral reef. And I was taking peas out of my pocket and, and, and feeding the fish, and they were coming from everywhere. Gorgeous, beautiful fish, parrot fish. But I didn't know, I've now realized, that peas were floating out of my pocket, and something bit me. Now, I grew up with Jaws. I went to the movies to see Jaws, so I was convinced that I was being eaten by a shark. I swam toward the wave as fast as I could, and that wave crashed me into the coral reef. I remember coming out of the water. Kathy said, what's going on? I was uh, bleeding all over, and I dried myself off. I said, it's all right. She said, where's the bag? I had tied the bag around my waist, a waterproof bag with our key, hotel key, with our, with our credit cards and with our money. I negotiated with a taxi driver to get us back to the hotel, and there, up in the room, I would have in the safe, there would be more money. He said, okay. And on the way back to the hotel, I'm thinking in my head, Kathy will stay in the car as collateral while I run up. <laughs> we pulled up to the hotel, I jumped out of the car, slammed the door, and I didn't hear a sound except like somebody hitting a coconut. And I turned to find my bride just holding her head that I had slammed her car in the door. 
But it's okay, there was another day. <laughs> and the next day, to make a long story short, this is the last day, we decided we were going to go sit on the beach and just kind of relax. And we sat on the beach and began to relax and began to think, okay, now let's just at least deal with the fact that our wedding photographer that we paid for didn't show up to the wedding. We'll deal with that as well. We got up, we began walking, and then we saw all these people running and screaming. And we thought, oh no, what's going on? And they pulled a dead body out of the water. It's 30 years ago, so I've taken care of it. But I remember walking back to the hotel, and I turned to Kathy, and I said, Kathy, I love you, but I think you're bad luck. (laughs) And she said something I can't remember. (laughs) I remember getting back, and Kathy reminded me after the first service when I told the story that there is a picture of her and me after we get back, but we're smiling, (laughs) but we knew what we had gone through. I'm not embellishing anything in this story at all. It was the most, well, it was a honeymoon. Let's just put it that way. (laughs) Relationships are messy because all I could think about and all she could think about is what have we done? If this is a foreshadowing. Now, if we look at our relationship, to be sure, over the years, we've had some very, very hard times. Hospitalizations, things going wrong, you name it, it's been wrong. But we've had some good times too. And sometimes you ask the questions, what have I gotten into? But in relationships, they're always valuable. They are always deep. doesn't matter what you go through. If you hang in there, it's valuable. And I think this is the message of the Bible from beginning to end, because we see at the very beginning God creating humans for relationship, and things go wrong all the way through. That's the history of the world. That's the history of our lives. And we see God's faithfulness throughout all of the scriptures that God loves us so much and God will never give up on us. We actually see this beautiful imagery in the Old Testament of of God being our husband, we being the bride. Israel was known. The prophets condemned them, condemned Israel because they would wander off to other lovers, if you will, other gods, who would then abuse them. And every time God would come back and say, okay, I'm taking you home. And grace and mercy and love was always extended. We see it in Isaiah, in Jeremiah, and throughout all the prophets. We have a book of the Bible called Hosea, Hosea, which in Hebrew means salvation. And in that book, Hosea, the prophet Hosea is called to have a wife who will wander off from him. And every time she wanders off, he's to go with her and bring her back. And and where she's been abused, then to tenderly love her and give her grace and mercy. It is a way to show how God loves God's people. And we get in the New Testament. What we find in the New Testament is this image that Jesus tells us about the bride. He came for the bride. He came to bring people into the relationship that is so deep and beautiful and meaningful. That's what we find in our text this morning. We see the disciples of John the Baptist and the Pharisees coming up to Jesus and saying, hey, Jesus, your disciples, they don't fast. We fast. Why? And Jesus gives them this image, this beautiful image Why should they fast? The groom's already here. You see, in the Old Testament and throughout time, and I guess in every religion, if I suppose, there was always this longing to pray to the divine, to pray that things would work out. The Jews were praying that God's kingdom would come. They wanted to draw close to God. And often through prayer, they would also fast. That was to neglect something for the moment that would get in the way of a relationship with God. So it would be different. If, if, you, if you didn't eat a meal, then you focused on God. Or, or you cut out parts of your meal, you focused on God. It was a way to prepare for the kingdom of God to come. In fact, the question the Jews asked of Jesus, is this now the time you'll restore the kingdom to Israel? Because they'd been praying and fasting. All of Israel saw it as their point of praying to God for the Messiah to come because when the Messiah comes, he will bring us back to God who is our husband. Oh, we long for that loving relationship again. And so they would pray 
and they would fast. But by the time of Jesus, that prayer and fasting had turned hypocritical. We find the Pharisees at that time who were praying and fasting on Tuesdays and Thursdays. That was the tradition. Tuesdays and Thursdays, they prayed and fasted. And we wonder why Tuesdays and Thursdays, it became very clear. Those were the market days. Those were the days when all the people would come into Jerusalem or the surrounding areas to buy their items. And when they came, they would see the Pharisees praying or making sorrowful phrases. Instead of praying for God's kingdom to come or praying for connected to the divine, they were focusing everything on themselves. Look at me. And so we see Jesus in his gospel teaching saying, do not be like those hypocrites. When you pray, go in your closet, and your Father knows you're doing that, will reward you. And when you fast, don't make long faces. It's between you and God. Fast. And so we see that the early church, though, they they did... They, they did fast and pray originally on Tuesdays and Thursdays because they were Jewish following the Pharisees. After Jesus ascended into heaven, now he's been taken away from them, just as he said. Now they would fast on Wednesdays and Fridays. Wednesdays would be the time on a weekly basis for them to remember that it was Wednesday night when Jesus was betrayed by Judas. It was called Spy Wednesday. And so every week they would remember that night that Jesus was betrayed. And every Friday they would remember that this was when Jesus was crucified. Every week they would remember. And every Sunday they'd come together to remember that this is the day that Jesus rose from the dead. Friends, that's what we're doing here now. Every time we come together on a Sunday is a representation, weekly a representation, Jesus has risen from the dead. That is the focus of our faith and theology. But as Jesus said, that, that, that fasting and praying for us and the church, the church would do that up till the 8th and 9th century and then kind of went into different traditions for fasting and praying. Jesus didn't say, if you ever get around to fasting, he said, when you fast. In other words, it's this idea that within us is this calling to want to be with God, praying and fasting, getting rid of those things that get in the way. But notice Jesus put that in the term of marriage. Because the early church, much like the Jewish church before them, were praying for God's kingdom to come. They were praying for God to be one with them. They were praying for the Messiah to come because the Messiah would bring us back to God, our husband. And that is why Jesus said what he said. Why don't your disciples fast? The wedding attendants cannot fast while the bridegroom is with them, can they? The days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. They'll fast on that day. Jesus has ascended into heaven. We still pray and we fast because we long to be with him again. And he's coming again one day. But Jesus tied together bridegroom and fasting as if this was the central thing that we should be looking for. You belong to God. You are the bride of Christ. You, me, we isn't that beautiful? And relationships are messy. On this side of eternity, relationships are very messy. As I was preparing this message this last week, I kept thinking, God, I feel like there's somebody who needs to hear that relationships are messy. Maybe they feel like they're ready to give up on God. Maybe they feel like, what's this worth, God? God. I give my life to you and it just feels like I'm, I'm in trouble or it doesn't work out. Don't give up on God. God won't give up on you. This morning, if you're struggling in that relationship, let Jesus affirm in your heart again that he loves you. That is the most important thing in theological position. Jesus loves you. You're his bride. He gave his life for you. You're precious. You belong to him. I love the words at the end of the Bible. The very last words that we see uh, in, in Revelation 19, before we get to the final chapter, 
Revelation 19, we see this call that goes out. And this call that goes out is the cry of creation. This is the ultimate moment to which we're moving. All of our history is moving to this one particular moment, and it will happen when the cry goes out in eternity. Hallelujah! For the Lord God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. To her it has been granted to be clothed in fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. This is everything. This is where we're going. You've been invited. Oh, but you haven't just been invited. You are the prophet. And I know relationships are messy, and right now you might be wondering, God, where are you? Why are you doing this? How come this is hard? Don't give up. Kathy and I have hard, had hard times. We've had joyful times as well. But somehow you grow deeper and deeper and deeper into love and presence. In my ring, my wedding ring in, inside, there's do, uh, Song of Solomon 6.3, which I think is the most poetic phrase that ever was in any culture tradition. It's Hebrew. Ani la dodi ve la dodi li. I am my beloved. I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. One day... She or I will lay the other before the Lord. And you know what's okay? Because our relationship together as husband and wife is just a foreshadowing of what is to come. And what's to come is we are the bride of Christ. We're just a foreshadowing of the beauty that can be one day and will be one day. Don't give up on God. You are loved more than you can ever know. And I believe that we who are the bride of Christ are called to live the bride of Christ before this world. There are times I wonder in the church today, the Western church especially, does that really look like the bride of Christ? Does it really represent Jesus? The one who loves the world? and gave his life for the world. Friends, we are to share, show, demonstrate, speak that we are beloved and that the invitation is given to everyone. Come. Come. Jesus loves you. Amen? Amen. We come to communion today, and as we come to communion, we remember just how much Jesus loves us. That he came, had everything, left his throne above, left it all, worship of the angels, worship of all creation, became a poor carpenter in Nazareth to come and to get his bride, you and me. He loves us so much. How much he, put, he stretched out his arms on a cross, withholding nothing to bring, us, to bring us home. All that stuff you feel gets in the way, it's forgiven you come because God wants his bride back. And this morning as we come to communion, if you feel like you're far from God, if you feel like you're struggling with God, it's okay. Just come. And let Jesus affirm in your life, in your heart, you are the precious bride and Jesus loves you. The Lord Jesus on the night of his arrest was at the Passover meal. There at the Passover meal, he took bread and he blessed it. And after blessing it, he broke it. He said, this is my body broken for you. As often as you do this, remember me. After supper, he took the cup. It was one of four cups used in the Passover feast. Most likely the third cup, known as the cup of salvation. And he blessed it. And after blessing it, he said these words, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my life's blood. As often as you drink this, Remember me.
I can imagine Jesus that night tearing that bread apart, realizing in just a few hours his body would be broken on the cross. Excruciating, excruxis means out of the cross, pain. Looking down to see the blood poured out for the forgiveness of our sins, he spared nothing to come for his bride, to bring her home. This morning as you come forward, make this a moment where you come home and you say yes to Jesus' invitation. It's hard. You'll struggle. We all struggle. But his mercy and grace is always there for us. And Jesus is always faithful to us. Come to this table. Now, our tradition here is that you'll come to your left, your right. <laughs> Let me check my shoe. No, you're right. <laughs> and go at... Well, you know how to go. There's a diagram there. I'm just not going to spend time. You, you got it, right? But come when you're ready and come and receive God's forgiveness and let the Holy Spirit affirm in your life that you belong to God. Nothing in life or in death can take you away from God. Jesus loves you. Come to this table. God in the sanctuary, bless God in the fields of plenty, bless God in the darkest valley, every chance I get, I bless your name, bless God when my hands are empty, bless God with a praise that calls me, bless God when nobody's watching, every chance I get, I bless your name, bless God when Weapons forming, bless God when the walls are falling, bless God cause he's always before me, every chance I get, I bless your name, bless God for he holds the victory, bless God for he's always with me, bless God for he's always with me, every chance I get, I bless your name. I 
said when you do this remember me let us remember the Lord oh God we thank you for the supper shared in the spirit with your son Jesus who makes us new and strong brings us eternal life you have given yourself to us in every way Lord we give ourselves back to you Take us, body, soul, mind, and spirit, that we might know the beauty of the fellowship, the friendship, the relationship in this thing called the kingdom of God. Thank you for blessing us. Lord, we love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you stand with us? Sing, come on, bring your offering. Thank you for being in worship this morning. It's wonderful to be with you. And if you're online joining with us, extend a special welcome to you. God loves you so much. In fact, I, I love that scripture from Romans chapter 8, which says, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Friends, you are beloved of God. And as we go out to this world, let us love and serve the world to let them know by our words, by the way we live, by the, what we demonstrate, the kingdom of God is real and that God loves the world too. May they come to that great wedding feast one day. Let us join others to join with us. As you go, may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. And if you'd like prayer this morning, Pastor Chuck and Elder Cindyola are there to pray for you. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise in all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son. church go in love.